it starts from the moment you enter the court. We walk into a gym, we're hated by 50% of the people and we're loved by 50% of the people, depending on the outcome of the game. My name is Garrett Daggett. I'm from Akron, Ohio, born and raised. Uh, came to Spokane in 1994. Basketball was really all, it was intertwined in my life. In Akron, Ohio, Basketball and football were the mainstream sports. My family was known for playing basketball through my uncles and then um, some of my older cousins. And then me uh, got to be on a couple of championship teams, went to college, ran track in college, did high jump, long jump, triple jump. Uh, anything to do with jumping or running was, was in my forte. <laughs> When I was in the Air Force, I played for the base team and you know, you play in those intramural squads. And serving your country was one thing, but basketball was the thing that I wanted to you know, be doing. And so um, I had an opportunity to actually play for the all Air Force basketball team. And that was serving my country in a different manner in that we had the ability to meet guys from different, you know, different uh, military backgrounds, Air Force, Mar uh, Army, Marines, Navy, and you know, there was this tournament that they would, you know, allow us to, to play in. But as an official today, we really are, I mean, we're there to serve the schools, the students, uh, most importantly, you know, to make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game, and it's just been wonderful. My name is Hannah Shehaber. I'm from Oakland, Illinois. Been a soccer official for 21 years. Moved here at the age of nine and been living in Chicago ever since. In Dubai, where I grew up, soccer is literally the number one sport. There's nothing like it. Parents and uncles and cousins or whatever, that's all they watched is soccer. That's all they played is soccer. So that's all I knew it was soccer. At the time, I didn't want to play sports. Um, I was very active, but it wasn't in my head, oh, I want to grow up and play soccer. Females in general in the Middle Eastern culture are not encouraged to be in sports. I realized that I really truly loved soccer when I was a freshman in high school. The first year they started a soccer program for the women and I just wanted to be on that team, the first team, and that's when I just fell in love. I chose to be an official when I was a senior in high school, 17 years old. I think it's the best decision I've made because it made me see things in their lens. And the crossover wasn't really that difficult. You could play, and you could make extra money on the weekends on the side, and why not? Regardless of what culture you are, regardless of gender, regardless of anything, why can't I do it? My name is Kaylee Kimura, and I'm a basketball official and volleyball official for the NCAAs. I'm also an international basketball official. Getting into sports started when I was pretty much coming out the crib. My mom was a school teacher for physical education and also dance and art. And my mom was a coach for uh, multiple sports. My dad was a psychologist, but of course my mom took me to all the practices, so that got me started early. My first sport was soccer, and then I got scholarship for volleyball at Cal State LA. My relationships with the officials coming up was hot and cold sometimes. I was definitely one of the more fiery athletes, especially when I played basketball. I felt like sometimes I would, you know, block a clean shot and then a whistle would go and then I would have some words. And so I was one of those people that would definitely speak up if I didn't feel like the call was correct. But in terms of my overall relationship with them, there was much respect and I definitely remembered the ones that were doing a good job. I play basketball with some of the officials that are my mentors and have started me on that, on that route. I think when I was objecting loudly to a call here and there, my officiating friends would razz me and they would be like, you know what, you should definitely do this, you know? They brought me in, they took me under their wing and they said, uh, come to this camp. My first camp was the Ed Kikuchi 
basketball camp and it was for beginners. I wasn't even in a high school unit yet. It was a good first experience for me and they were very encouraging so it kind of kept me on my progress through. My name is Gene Steratore. I was an NFL football official for 15 years and a college basketball, Division I college basketball official for 27 years of my life. You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Uh, really from the time I was born, I was one of seven children and uh, officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. That was the experience for my family. It, it was the, the opening up and exposing the children and the family to, to colleges and to different cities and, and, and that type of life, which, which really was, as, as I look back, one of the greatest gifts that I got from officiating. And then jumping into the, the officiating itself, uh, opened up an entirely new set of challenges and, and experiences that really bridged into my personal life as well, which really made it rewarding and even more rewarding as my career continued to evolve. And uh, rewards were more than just, hey, you refereed at Lambeau Field or you refereed a Super Bowl or you were in the NCAA tournament. Those were all natural experiences that anybody would dream of if you were an official or as a person. But, but the challenges that officiating presented to me as an individual, as I continued again to further myself in the career, became much more profound and officiating became a much bigger deal to me than just, hey, get the striped shirt on and referee this game. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. You want to ref a game without any mistakes, but you also realize that perfection is always something we strive to do. Knowing that we probably won't ever reach perfection, somewhere in between, I think it might have even been Vince Lombardi said that as we strive for perfection, uh, excellence might actually take place. My name is Jackson Newell. I'm from uh, Lansing, Michigan. I'm 20 years old. My father, in between his job at the MHSAA, Moonlighted, is a uh, college baseball umpire. Also his brother, my uncle, spent a number of years in the minor leagues trying to work his way up. Also does a little bit of college baseball, so it was something that was acutely aware for me. Sometimes we'd go down to Toledo, watch the AAA for the Tigers. My uncle would umpire there a lot. Yeah, my dad was a big influence on me, being a guy who worked multiple College World Series and stuff. He's the one who guy hooked me up with my first uh, piece of equipment to use. Uh, he's also first real coach. So he kind of brought every little aspect of baseball to me and uh, how much I appreciate it. And from the player, from the official, from the coach standpoint, he wrapped that all in one and allowed me to like really appreciate the game and want to get back to it that way. Perfect. There are no two baseball games that are directly the same. Different officiating crews, different way they see the game, different ways they like to approach managers, players, situations, all that kind of stuff. You know, the passion you feel for baseball never really changes, and that's something I can still apply to officiating it because I still enjoy it. If you carry that passion of baseball with you, it's hard to really let it go. At the end of the day, through all the different calls, the pitches, the hits, the arguments, the decisions, everyone is there because they have a passion for baseball, and that's the most important thing to remember. It's a very fun job to do, Beats working as a busboy or a janitor in a kitchen or whatever. It's you get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. Baseball officiating community is very tight. They're very supportive. They want you to get the most out of it and have just kind of the best experience you can because they have and they want to share it with a lot of other people too. People are always looking for young umpires to take over. You can get a lot out of it. You know, I've always been in sports. Never thought about being a basketball official, but a time came in my life, some changes had happened. I said, man, I can do that. I can do that. So I'm gonna give that a try. And that was in 1999. If you're an athlete and you're not moving on to further your career, it doesn't mean that you're not a good athlete. We need, we need people like you and, you know, who have played basketball, the young athletes who can, you know, translate those skills to officiating. So this game is a lot of self-awareness, self-assessment, but you're also getting critiqued and getting feedback. 
So much of officiating is not necessarily what you do on the court. It's how you conduct business off the court as well. Being an official, sure it's not easy. You've got coaches and fans yelling at you and we never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. What I feel is most difficult in officiating, whether it was boys or girls, but most definitely boys soccer, was trying to gain the same respect as my counterparts that are male. And I definitely received a lot of harsh comments over it throughout the years. And you know, sometimes it deflates a person, but it made me just wanna keep pursuing it and persevering so that I didn't allow those people to have the best of me or take away a passion of mine. Look, you're out there working with multiple people with multiple personalities, right? And you gotta juggle it. You gotta multitask being out there, not only focusing on the game and making sure you're calling the laws of the game in accordance to the game, but you also gotta keep in mind the safety and, and keep in mind the partners that you're working with and keep in mind the coaches and the teams. I mean, look, I didn't have an easy road starting out and going through it. I'm, I'm blessed to have had the opportunities that I've had. And if it wasn't for those difficulties, I don't think I would be where I'm at. Right. Messes are sometimes blesses, right? It would have been stupid of me to give up. I, I would have done myself a disservice because it helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. And what I really found uh, that officiating gave back to me as a man and as a person was it taught me so many of the virtues in life which I feel like uh, benefited me and hopefully are still benefiting me as a human being. When you officiate, you realize that on any given day, on any given game, one situation may come up that lasts seconds. In that situation, if it's done incorrectly, it could follow you the rest of your life. You must navigate that mentally to embrace that pressure. And I think personally that it helped me become a better partner and in my, in my loving relationship. I think it helped me become a better father to my children and, and I think just a better person overall. And it doesn't have to be at the professional level. It happens in every town, in every game, you're the person that sets the table for the atmosphere to be played correctly, but you never exceed the spotlight.